I'm hearing that, uh... This got announced a while ago. Um, the Cannibal Holocaust game. That's being... I think it's being written by Ruggiero Diodato, who directed the original. Which, for some reason, I guess... Is this some kind of Mandela effect shit or whatnot? Um, I thought he had died a few years ago. Maybe I was confusing it with when H.G. Lewis died, but I thought Diodato had died. He didn't die, though. And he's working on a Cannibal Holocaust video game. It got announced- I think it was supposed to come out in the fall, actually. I think it is going to be like a Telltale's game type format. Which, don't get me wrong, I did enjoy the Telltale, um... Walking Dead. I enjoyed the Telltale Walking Dead game. But, you know, you, you, you just announced that you have a Cannibal Holocaust game coming and your mind fills with all kinds of possibilities of something a little bit more involved, but apparently it'll just be a story-based game. I don't think they announced what the actual, uh... what the story will actually about be- will actually be about. I don't think they announced the story will be about in the Cannibal Holocaust game. Um... I do remember, though, so, if you- there is one of the- the most asshole-ish of all the documentarians in the Cannibal Holocaust was the dude Alan Yates. Kind of like the main antagonist in a way. It's been a while since I watched Cannibal Holocaust, but I think spoilers- like, close your ears if you don't want spoilers. Uh, I'm pretty sure when he dies, we kind of see the camera, like, lay next to his face, and you see- like, you don't necessarily see him die. But it's, it's very heavily implied, like, how would this guy not be fucking dead at the end of this movie? Like, you, got, you watch one guy gets his dick cut off in the distance. Um, I think the, uh, the, the lady documentarians get taxed out and killed. Uh, but Alan dies next to the camera. But then, years later. Years and years and years later. I remember, and I couldn't find this thing, but I'm sure it exists. Um, and not that it's canon or anything like that, because it's just a DVD extra feature, but I specifically remember there being, like, a DVD extra feature that was done in the character of Alan Yates by the original actor, and basically implying that he survived after, and I think they were kind of talking up a short... Or something like that to follow it up. That being said, it wouldn't surprise me if the Cannibal Holocaust game wound up, uh, you know, following along the Alan Yates story. Just because, you know, that was a kernel of an idea at some point. There was one really funny interview with Robert Kerman, who played the professor in Cannibal Holocaust. And, like, he's, like, he's drinking out of a red cup. I'm pretty sure he's, like, drunk as fuck in the interview. And he's just, like, talking to- the, the interview was just, like, him talking about how much he hated making this fucking movie. For, uh... I think it's, like, a 40-minute interview. Actually, what sucks, too, is, like, Robert Kerman died, like, the last year, I think. Before the game was announced, and, like, thinking about that, it would be so cool for them to do the follow-up and have him be in it. I remember, I actually had a mutual friend with him. I think he lived in New York for a time. And they were like, yo, like, if you know, like, any acting gigs and shit, like, Robert's trying to, like, get back into, into, it, get, like, get it back into working. I never got to meet him. I was, like, there was a thing I was supposed to do to, uh, like, she was gonna bring him out to this thing. And I was gonna go with them, but then he wound up getting sick. So, I couldn't go. He had an interesting career, though, because I think, I think he was a porn guy at some point. Well, I think he did porn at some point in his career, and then he, like, at some, did, like, a bunch of cannibal movies. Like, not only was he in Cannibal Holocaust, there's another one where he's a cop. Um, it might be, like, Jungle Holocaust or something like that, or... There's so many cannibal movies that are very similar to each other, and I forget which ones are which. I think it's Cut and Run. It has, a uh, Buddy from Charles in Charge as the main character. And that one Filipino chick that was in a lot of movies like that, Mimi Lei, I think she was in that as well. But that that's definitely, of all, like, the random people who show up in a movie like that, Buddy, uh, Willie Amos, Buddy from Charles in Charge, being in a fucking cannibal movie is just inherently amusing to me. That's a movie that they, they should do a sequel to, uh, the, the, the Charles in Charge cannibal movie. They, you know what, they should literally make it. 
so that the the world of Cut and Run exists inside Charles the Charles in Charge universe. And Buddy just, you know, he came back from the jungle and he's like, I this is I gotta get away from all this craziness. I know. I'm I'm gonna uh, help my buddy Charles watch some fucking kids. Lopjing, what happened actually? So with Cannibal Holocaust, I think the sto as the story goes, hell yeah, stab in the stab him in the the coccyx. I think the way the story goes is that the uh, cause it's a found footage movie, so it looks like you're watching all this footage that's on that's been recorded surreptitiously. So it's a found footage movie, and you see in, in the footage all of these uh, documentarians getting killed, and whoever had seen it thought that they really got killed in the movie. So he, in order to not go to jail for murder. The director had to go to the Italian court with the actors still alive and well. At least that's how the story has been told. I'm not sure how accurate that is. It's actually... This is actually something I was working on for a movie idea. I want to do it eventually. But I don't think the story in and of itself is enough to sustain one video. So I might... I was thinking of a way to combine it with the... Um, the, the Charlie Sheen story. The Charlie Sheen guinea pig story, because there's, um, if you don't know the guinea pig movies, the way they started out was kind of as fake snuff films, and Charlie Sheen got a hold of one of these fake snuff films, and he thought it was a real snuff film, so Charlie Sheen goes to the FBI to try to, like, get, get to the bottom of this. I feel like combining that story with the Cannibal Holocaust story in the video is kind of the way to go for that topic. Oh, they tried to charge him and he made the actors agree to not appear in anything for a certain amount of time after Cannibal Holocaust to make the found footage more convincing. That's pretty cool. I, I love shit like that. I, I, like, shit like that makes the wrestling fan in me happy. I was like, we're like, we're so far removed from those days in wrestling where you know, back in the day in wrestling, a wrestler gets hurt. They're... They're... Walking around in crutches in real life. But we don't do that anymore. Now wrestlers go by their real names on Twitter. And get their own sponsorships and shit like that. Which, I mean, that's honestly, like... From a labor perspective... That's a lot more fair than how it used to be. Because, I mean, if all these wrestlers, they're gonna be independent contractors then how much say should their company have with their other business ventures, you know? But there's something, I get. but that being said, there is something lost to not, uh... to, to not having that be your whole life where you, you go out into the world pretending to be injured.